Now, sometimes uh, I can predict when I'm about to be recognized. <laughs> when you see a teenager in your local area holding a 10 pack of Mountain Dew, I was like, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to chapter 132, I think, of worded tutorials of a well-lit uh, male-gendered man. How are we all doing? Hope you guys have had a good week. Uh, I've had one of those weeks. Oh, you know when you have one of those weeks? Like you wake up, you look yourself in the mirror, and you just turn religious all of a sudden, and you're like, Oh God. Oh, what happened? When you just question everything. I haven't I haven't shaved in like a week. You know, I'm wearing a cap because I got bed hair. I had a shower, so I woke up, had crazy bed hair. And I was like, you know what, Luke? Let's just start the day. Kick it off with a warm shower. Let's get into it. Got a lot to do today. So, uh, you know, the last thing you'd want is, is scruffy looking bed hair, you piece of shit. So I got in the shower and got out of the shower, gave it a quick dry. About an hour later... Caught myself in uh, the reflection in on the on our back door, right? Which is a glass door. It's not important, guys. The point is, I caught myself in the reflection, and I just was like, "Oh boy, wowee!" That's one of those. That's when you know you're having a shit one. When you have a shower, you try and avoid it. So then I was like, "Fuck, we're capping it up today inside." I'm one of those guys now. You know those guys you see them at nightclubs, backwards snapback indoors at night time and the dude's like oh man it was swear to god it was sunny before i left you're like yeah it's winter dude cool just you know and, and that's the thing i'm owning it i'm 100 percent doing it for our uh, fashion uh and aesthetic and look purposes that's why i'm wearing a hat today and if you're audio listener of the podcast you know it, it doesn't matter so i don't know why i brought it up the point is guys having one of those weeks just where i'm like Oh, I've been working 12, 14 hour days every day, hustling. I'm trying to get my YouTube channel back from the depths of the fucking pit that is the YouTube algorithm that I'm currently in. Um, so I've been working hard to do that. Been trying to pump out as much Bachelor videos. Then shit just keeps going wrong. I swear to God, like the more you try and the more you apply yourself, the more life is like, not today. Oi, check your hair, by the way look shit and you're like thanks life i'll have a shower and try and deal with it then an hour later life's like hey check it again still looks shit so that's where i'm at hope you guys are having a better week than i am i'll be honest and that's that's the thing of doing a weekly podcast they're not all going to be happy it's not all fun and games life life is a roller coaster and sometimes roller coasters go down and then they come off the, the, the track and people die. And I think I'm having one of those weeks. I'm having a real dream world of a week, you could say. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, what else has been happening with me other than... Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm working hard, trying to work 12-hour days at the moment. Because I'm, you know, waking up, I'm editing, um, and I'm, I'm doing I'm trying to do everything myself still, which is becoming increasingly difficult um i've been you know trying to organize and edit by the way i'm still taking applications if you want to uh edit so if you're from melbourne um i don't think i was very clear the first time if you're from melbourne um and you can edit on final cut pro with a mac that's kind of the requirement and uh and you're happy um to work in the northeastern suburbs of melbourne then uh hit me up you know it's one day a week i just like really need someone to help me get on top of all my editing shit because Look at me, man. I look like like my beard is coming through. I look like a member of the Weasley family. So, you know, I've got that I got that ginger tinge going on. I got that red head. I got that orange. Nothing rhymes with orange. But the point is, I look like shit. And I think maybe if I had an editor, it would completely change my whole vibe. I'd have time to shave. You know, my my hair would just be like stay in place. You know, what? maybe I'd have I'd have time to get a haircut. Because at the moment, God, I even have a cap on and I have bed hair. Not even hat hair. I take my hat off for one second 
God damn, it's just not my week. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you think uh, that's something you'd be interested in, I'm still um, going over some people. A lot of people hit me up a few months ago, and I literally just got around to um, checking them out. So uh, yeah, if you want to just send me an email, luke.kitchell at gmail.com. If you want to edit, um, you kind of have to hate money a little bit. No, it's a paid position, by the way. It's um, So yeah, it's paid position, one day a week, um, and... Must have Final Cut, must have a Mac, and yeah, be willing to work in the north, eastern suburbs of Melbourne. It's pretty specific, that requirement, so I'm not expecting much of a response, but if, if you think that's you, then hit me up, let me know. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to work hard, and yesterday, I was like, Bachelor starts tonight, yeah, this was yesterday, it's already started, and it's thir- I'm recording this on the Thursday, who fucking knows when this is going to come out, by the way, hopefully it comes out tonight, uh, otherwise... Ah, oh, because life, life's probably thrown me another curveball by the time I finish recording this. Like, I'm, okay, I know I keep talking about how bad my week is. I'm having such a bad week that if the roof fell in on me right now, I'd probably just shrug it off. I'd be like, cool, life. Is that all you got? Because you've been throwing curveballs like bad hair, bad facial hair. I'll be honest, it's mainly about <laughs> my hair. <laughs> But, you know, I've had other shit stuff happen. What else happened this week? Um, I don't know. Like, you know you know, you know, what kind of week I'm having? Uh, someone was like, oh, have a good time. And they dropped me off at a place. And I was like, you too. They weren't going. They were just dropping me off. So that's kind of the week I'm having, you know? Like, other people are like, how are you, man? And I'm like, yes, thanks. Fuck. And then people go... I'm like, and everyone just goes, oh, he's probably having a shit one. And I am. And and it's good people understand. But anyway, so I keep trying to tell the story and I keep getting distracted. I'm doing 12 hour days. And then I, uh, um, working yesterday, the bachelor started. So I'm trying to work on this video. I'm like, I need to get this bachelor video up by tonight. I can't get a bachelor video about prepping for the bachelor out after the episode's uploaded. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, hi, I'm Luke Kidgel, and I can do that. And I really tried my best to get it up. Then, my laptop charger was like, hey, Luke, look in the reflection. And I was like, what? And then it broke. So that's kind of the week that I'm having. My laptop charger was like, fuck you. And I was like, sweet. Thanks, Apple. Love it. Once again regretting my life so i didn't want to go to the apple store i was like i'm going to go to jb hi-fi and this is me this is 4 p.m still optimistic that i could get the video up by 7 30 p.m when the bachelor aired it's 4 p.m right i'm trying to edit and it was one of those days where i it was 100 percent full at the start of the day so i started editing the video and then it got my laptop got down to like 10 percent. so i was like oh shit i need my charger and then i looked around plugged it in it was broken cool so, 4 p.m., I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can still get it. So, I quickly went to the shops. Now, when I was at the shops, I do want to apologize. Um, there was uh, one, someone, um, hey, you sent me an email, actually, afterwards. Uh, so, I'm walking up the ramp to go into the shopping center. Uh, I'm with Meg, and there's a dude walking about 20 meters away, coming towards me. We're coming towards each other. And, you know, he's like a teenage kid and he's holding a 10-pack of Mountain Dew. Now, sometimes uh, I can predict when I'm about to be recognized. <laughs> when you see a teenager in your local area uh, holding a 10-pack of Mountain Dew, I was like, here we go. <laughs> here we fucking go. And I leaned to me and I was like, I bet this kid's going to say something. And Meg's like, what? And then as soon as I said that, the kid's like, what? Are you Luke Kidgel? And I was like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, it's, what What annoyed me was, and good on him, man. It seemed like a really nice dude. I hope he enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed your Mountain Dew. Um, and I know he listens to the podcast because he emailed me after. Um, so I know he's going to hear this. But yeah, man, seemed like a cool dude. Hope you hope you enjoyed doing the Dew. And uh, he looked like he was having a better week than me. And... But Jesus, fuck, I was disappointed in myself. I knew. I was like, 10-pack of Mountain Dew. Got to be a Luke Kidgel fan. <laughs> I hate that I can pick it. Like, I was out in the weekend, and there was this dude being a fucking moron. 
in like the in this bar that I was at and he was kind of young like you know 20 22 years old and then he started like he pulled out this shitty phone and his friends started giving him shit about like what the fuck do you still have that it was like an oppo you know those phones it's like they're just anyway it's a terrible brand of phone apparently i don't know and all his friends started giving him shit and i just somehow thought i don't know why i just was like i bet he's gonna say something to me and then straight away like it's like it's like i can predict the future he just goes are you like kid and i was like yep so that's my fan base guys I'm sure most of you are listening to this on your oppo, drinking a 10-pack of fucking Mountain Dew, because uh, apparently that's the people I attract, and you know what? Good on you guys, you know, you, you are what you eat, and <laughs> you, you, you know, you attract what you put out, and that shows a lot about my content, so... Anyway, this guy's like, oh, bro, you kid you, and I really want to apologize to the guy at the shopping center, I think, I didn't, I wasn't trying to brush you off, I was just... You know when you're at a shopping center and you have, like, one thing to do and you're on a fucking mission? You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to go to JB Hi-Fi, hate myself, and buy this new laptop charger because mine broke and I don't have time to think about anything else right now. I was in that headspace, so I'm powering up the ramp, going in the shopping center, and he's walking the other way, and he's like, oh, look, Kidjul. And he went like this to me. He gave me, like, like this weird, like, like a, how the wiggles, like, do the wiggling gesture with his finger. He's like... Uh, but he did it with one finger because he was like holding the Mountain Dew 10 pack in the other hand. So he's like, and wiggled his finger at me. And I usually stop and go like, oh man, what's your name? And blah, blah, blah. And I'll usually have a chat with people because, you know, I appreciate anyone who likes my content and it's cool and always feel like you can come up to me, by the way. If you ever see me in public, hey, come up. I'm always up for a chat unless I'm on a fucking mission to get a new charger. Um, in that case, I'll probably brush you off pretty hard. <laughs> I didn't mean to brush him off, but I was like, oh, th- yeah. I was like, yep. Because he just said, are you Luke Kidgel? What are you supposed to say that? Or like, uh, confirmed. Yes. What, what do you want me to yell? Do you want me to yell like your a confirmation across the room? I don't know what he wants from me. So um, I was like, yeah. And I gave him like a wiggle hand gesture back, which... I regretted immediately, and then afterwards I felt kind of bad because I kind of kept walking. Um, but then he he emailed me after, like went to the contact section of my website and uh, sent me a message, which was next level. Um, so he's, I I'm assuming his name was Kyle because um, he was holding a ten pack of Mountain Dew. Oh no, his name was Martin or Seth. Maybe it was Seth Martin. Anyway, um, subject awkward story. Uh, he said. Yeah, nah, I was the bloke that shouted, Luke Kidgel, holy shit. Oh, that's right, it wasn't, are you Luke Kidgel? Because that's what I usually get, it was, Luke Kidgel, holy shit. And that makes more sense to the Mountain Dew. He was probably pretty, you know, juiced up on Monster Energy or some other, or V. So he was like, Luke Kidgel, holy shit. And um, I was the bloke that shouted, Luke Kidgel, holy shit, as an old couple was walking past while looking 15 years old, carrying a 10-pack of Mountain Dew on the way to my car, and my friend was like, dude, he's not Brad Pitt, and my response to that was, he's my Brad Pitt, (laughs) oh, fuck, I'm the Brad Pitt of every Mountain Dew enthusiast, I'm like your idol, you know, (laughs) oh, that's pretty much rock bottom, um, I really enjoy your content, watch your podcast, all your vids, been to uh, your shows, but have never been able to hang around for the meet and greet. You've really kept my head above water. You truly have helped me. That's why I was so excited and awkward when I saw you. Sorry, mate. Dude, I read this. Oh, I felt so bad, man. I should have stopped. I'm so sorry. Um, if you ever see me again, uh, pull me up and yeah, have a chat. I'm always happy to have a chat with people. I was just in another, I was on another planet. You know, I needed one of your mountain Jews, dude. I, I needed a fucking kick up the ass. I was just, like, so, so, like, stressed and bummed out by this point of the day that I was just, like, I don't want to be here on my, I should be home editing, and then I went back home, so, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Seth, I'm very sorry, um, you're a legend, I really appreciate that, man, and, um, I'm glad you enjoy the videos and stuff, and thanks for yelling out Luke Kidgel, holy shit, um, yeah, next time, just stop and have a chat. I'll uh, be less of a less of a man on the go. So um, I got home, bought the charger. By the way, one hundred and thirty bucks down the drain. 
just pissing my money into some billion dollar corporation. That's what I like doing on a Wednesday. Hey, Apple, want some more money? Heads up. And then it's like they just alley oop it and go, kudunk, and just slam dunk it into their bank account. And I'm like, sweet. And then I like, and then, and then on the highlights reel, it doesn't show me, the consumer, you know, giving them money. It just shows Apple has made this much money this year. And I'm like, I contributed to that too. I always feel bad for the guy who chucks up the ball in the alley oop. And then, and then the guy who dunks it always gets the fucking credit. And you're like, hey man, that was a two, two person job. I made you rich Apple and you slam dunked it into your bank account. Not fair. So, whatever. So, I'm mad, maybe, still, from this week. And I didn't end up getting the Bachelor video done after all that. I went home and I edited for, like, two, three hours straight. And I was just, like, it ended up being, like, quite a long video. And I wanted to... I'm not going to put out a shitty video just to get it out on time. So, I thought I'll put some extra effort into it. And I had a gig. I was, like, headlining this room that night. So, I couldn't... It's not, not like I could cancel it. I was booked as the headliner. So, I had to go and like I was late for the gig and it was just like I was just one of those but I destroyed the gig actually that's the only good thing that's happened to me this week my my stand up man my shows have been on fire so I had a I had a real rough couple of months I'll be honest like I've got back from the tour and usually every year it takes me about six weeks of just churning out new shit that sucks ball sack before I get in like a rhythm of writing again and I and I tr- start churning out some good stuff. And every year it freaks me out. I'm like, am I not a good comedian anymore? But uh, yeah, this week I reckon I've got like seven minutes of new shit and it and I, I don't want to, I don't want to brag, but that's why I'm talking about it because I do. It, it annihilated and I was super stoked about that. It's n- nothing better, f- n- no better feeling than uh, when, when a new bit kills. So uh, yeah, I'm working hard. Um, for the show next year for you guys, and yeah, I had a few great gigs, and I've, I've done like six gigs this week, I'm, dude, I've done so much this week, I've done two videos, one, two that haven't been released, um, no, I've done three videos for my main channel, podcast, six gigs, two Luke and Lewis episodes, dude, I've been, I'm swamped, like, <laughs> it, I'm genuinely really tired, but, um, yeah, I think it'll be all worth it, I'm really trying to you know, as I said earlier, you know, rise from the pits of uh, the the hole that my YouTube channel got in for a bit. Like my views just went down, and uh, I just like wasn't feeling good about it. But 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 also I'm trying to I'm trying to you know I'm I just, by the way I think I should just come out and say this. Um, I like I I'm not really a YouTuber. In case you guys thought I was like a YouTuber, I'm definitely like a comedian. Um, I'm really focusing this year on being a comedian, if that makes sense. Like, I'm still going to keep doing YouTube, but maybe not in the sense of, like, what I used to do all the time. You know, I I I definitely prefer doing the podcast over, you know, the YouTube videos. I still really like doing YouTube videos and, and stuff, but, like, I... Yeah, I'm just, like, really trying to, you know, get the podcast out there, get as many people to listen to that, because that's kind of where I see my content going in the future. I still want to keep doing... Um, sketches and stuff because it it is a lot of fun but maybe just like you know put less pressure on myself is what I'm trying to say to put it out and really focus on a couple of things I feel like I've been trying to focus on too many things last year and that was the problem is not a problem it's just I feel like I could have grown a little more but I was had my hand in too many different pies I don't know why that's the saying is that the saying have my finger in too many different what's the saying I'm gonna duck duck go it had my had my uh, legs in too many baths. What? The <laughs> had my hand in. I oh, had my hands full. Is a good one. That's a good one. Had my hand in too many baskets. Is it that? Oh, yeah, it's have my finger in too many pies. So yeah, <sighs> what, what was I having to want to talk about? Oh yeah, the Bachelor's back. That that's cool. That's a thing that happened this week. Um, I'm excited. I am not gonna lie. Every year, you know, I, I'm kind of like. By the way, and I feel like some people commented this on my last video, that maybe new people who, people new to my channel, you guys know by now, but if you're new, welcome. Um, people are a bit confused about my feelings towards The Bachelor. People, I can't work out if I hate it or love it. It's a hate watch. Of course it is, but I love it. What you need to understand about me is I'm Australian, so I like trash. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, imagine like, 
This is what I do for entertainment. You know, like, you ever see someone bin diving for food? That's what I do for content. I just go down, I'm like, oh, what's on Australian television? And I stick my hand into the trash, and I pull out, I'm like, oh, The Bachelor, oh, Love Island, oh, uh, Celebrity Splash, that show that should come back where celebrities did diving from 10 years ago. That was a banger. Oh, what, what's... What's this? Oh, I'm. I, I don't really watch a lot of other TV. I'll be honest. It's mainly just Love Island. I should watch Married at First Sight, but after The Bachelor's finished, I think my brain needs to like you know regenerate some brain cells. I think I just need to get my brain back to like not you know I, I need to train myself to not rely on the garbage. Um, but yeah, the the Bachelor's back. Got a brand new batch. If you didn't see my video on it, go check it out. Matt Agnew. And one thing I didn't talk about in the video that I did on it was... I, I mentioned it, but I, I didn't go into it. One, one thing that weirded me out was they... The Bachelor Australia Facebook page uploaded a video of him running shirtless along the beach. Just, you know, tits out for the boys, the seagulls flying everywhere, just, you know, he's running through seagulls, they're all flying up, like, oh, it's a sick rig, and they're just, you know, like, that shot would have been so much shitter without the music, by the way, I'll get up what music they played, and, um, it yeah, definitely wouldn't have been as fun, I'll get up the video now, so you guys can kind of get a vibe of, uh, of what it was. I hate that the Bachelor Facebook page is in my, like, most recently searched. Like, it's in my recommendations. God damn. Um, oh, where's this video? So, by the way, I haven't seen the first episode of The Bachelor yet. I'm still behind. All right, here it is. So, it's called Shirtless Matt. And it's just a montage of him taking his shirt off in a very seductive manner. It's like a Magic Men kind of show. Ooh. Dude. Oh, hot damn, man. Um, someone commented on my video the other week, like, get me a guy who, uh, who uh, looks at me the way Luke looks at Matt, and I'll be honest, that's spot on. Um, and then he just, yeah, runs along the beach... And all these seagulls just start flying everywhere because they're like, holy shit, it's a, it's a machine at work. He's got to be the most attractive astrophysicist on Earth. There's like, you know, the rest of them are like, mm, yeah, when the start, you know, like we're measuring um, the, the gravity of, of Mars and, uh, you know, and, and I'd like to see, I don't even know what they do, but, <laughs> you know, oh, um, here's a, like, I'm pretty sure he described it as, uh, He's, he, their job is to come up with future places we could live on. So they're like, oh, what about Pluto? And they're like, nah, seems pretty chilly there. Oh, what about any other planet? Nah, no oxygen, mate. All right, we're fucked. That kind of seems like their job. Um, so yeah, but, but what bothered me about the video, I mean, was nothing. I loved it. So keep posting that kind of content. But I just was thinking, imagine, imagine the uproar if they did that on The Bachelorette. So that, oh, fines for the bachelor to get his shirt off, objectify the shit out of him, run along a beach, chits out for the boys. Dude, imagine if they were like to the girl, hey, get in a bikini, all right? It's like, think of the opening shot of Baywatch, Pam Anderson, run down the beach in slow motion with your tits bouncing around like bungee, your nipples are bungee jumping off your chest and back up in slow motion. Imagine the uproar. If the, oh my god, it was disgusting. You know, this show, it's objectifying women. Look, yes, I'm calling out the double standards. I'm not saying it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. I Maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. But all I'm saying is, dude, they would never do that shit for The Bachelorette. I was watching that, and I was like... And all the girls in the comments, by the way, like, fuck, he's so hot. Like... And just, I want to fuck the shit out of him. But, and I'm assuming all the girls in the comment section would be the same, the same ones to call it out if they reversed it. The Bachelorette was running on the beach and there was a bunch of guys going, oh, I would have fucked the shit out of her in the comment section. Those same girls that are saying it to the dude would be like, oh, that's disgusting. She's got a personality too. You're like, yeah? How much of this, how much of, <laughs> how much of her personality is this slow-mo montage showing yeah man i love her tits personality her tits have the best personality 
this it's so anyway i was just thinking about that there's so many things that are different between the bachelor and the bachelorette and by the way i'm not saying they should change i don't give a shit man they objectify the shit out of the dude I, if anything i'm for it you know everyone likes that rig but you know maybe maybe i the i don't really know what my point is to be honest <laughs> i think my point is just like man society's pretty fucked anyway um <laughs> I just was thinking, like, man, if that was... If the double standards of some of these reality TV shows between the guys and the girls, that's one thing that is pretty uh, pretty good about Love Island. And there's not a lot of positives you can take away from that show. But the one thing is they objectify the males and the females equally. And I think that's a quality, you know? They zoom up on a guy's bum crack, just up his... You know, like the V, like between a guy's jick, just up his thingo? They do that shit a lot. But they equally zoom in on the girl's tits, and I think that is, that's, that's a utopia that we should be all striving for, you know, that, that's a, that, that, that is a quality, and that's what feminism is all about, so, um, yeah, uh, by the way, it's so weird, there's so many young girls on The Bachelor, I did a video, which you can go check out, it's up now, um, of, you know, meeting all the girls who are going to be on The Bachelor this, this season, and one thing I can never get over every season is, they're all so young. Not all of them, but I think I counted, right? So there's there's three 23-year-old girls on the show. I'm 23. So these girls are in my year in high school. Like, they're five years out of high school, and they're like, oh, I just can't find love. You know, I'm, I'm 23, and I just... You know what? Last resort. Let's go on The Bachelor. You're 23. Go to a bar. You know, buy a nice top. Do your hair, you know? get a personality, all these things can help you find love and find a guy, there's just, I don't think there's any excuse, like, I could not imagine any, I've got a lot of friends who are females from high school, right, my age, I just could not picture any of them, I don't want to say resorting to The Bachelor, but like, deciding to go on The Bachelor, going like, oh, well, you know, I'm not having a lot of luck, and that's like all the girl's story is like, you know, I'm just, I, I'm not very lucky with love, and you're like, where's the point where you start l looking back on yourself, going like, oh, it's probably me, you know, this morning when I woke up, saw my head in the mirror, I was like, dude, you need to exercise more, you need to go outside, you've been, you've been, you know, not one point was I like, it's the mirror, <laughs> there wasn't any part of that where I was just like, blame something else. It's not me. Um, yeah, I just think that's crazy, man. There's there's girls who are at the prime of their life just, you know, gallivanting about on TV going like, I just want to find the one. It's like, you're 23. You don't need to be on The Bachelor. I get the ones who are like 30, man. If I was 30, I'd audition for The Bachelor. I'd be like, my life's over. I need to have kids. Please, can someone put one in me? Um, I, I totally get that, but 23, and then I checked, by the way, there's 10 girls, 25 years old or younger, am I, am I the weird one here, I, I just think that's quite young to be so concerned, and like going, oh, I need to, I need to go on, like, obviously, yes, they're doing it for Instagram followers, and they're probably just saying, like, I want to find the one, but like, you know, really, they'll probably find the one in their DMs in three months of some horny bloke, just going, oh, slowly on The Bachelor, love. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. I just can't get over that. Um, you know what we need to do, guys? You know, it's time for, it's time for this every week. Uh, and, and it was an interesting week. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the ultimate Pump Up Song Championships. The ultimate Pump Up Song Countdown slash tournament. Da -da -da -da. I don't want to get copyrighted. So I'm just doing that da, 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 myself. <laughs> da, 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 da. Now, if you're new to the podcast, uh, every week we are on a quest to find the ultimate pump up song. And uh, every week, a song, a pump up song uh, that we've chosen. So, so we've created a top 15, oh no, sorry, top 16 bracket of all the best pump up songs, new, old, uh, you know, different genres, rock, pop, rap, you name it. There's a lot of variety in here. We've got uh, Holding Up for a Hero on the Shrek 2 soundtrack. That should be a, you know, a, that, that'll be interesting. Who knows? 
But um, yes, yeah, so every week, uh, one song plays off against another until eventually we will have a grand final where two of the Ultimate Pump Up songs um, play against each other. Now, um, we have uh, last week... Sh- uh, what played off last week? Oh, oh yeah, Eye of the Tiger uh, was playing off against Joker and the Thief by Wolfmother. Unfortunately, uh, it was playing off against the inferior version of Joker and the Thief uh, by Wolfmother, which is the original. Obviously, the superior one is the Reese Maston version. It's an absolute bop. Better vocals, uh, just better. I don't really know a lot about music. Better, better music musicianship. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just better. It's a banger. It's a bop. You know, it gets the it gets the party cranking. You know, like Soldier Boy level crank. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, I the Tiger played off against Joker and the Thief. Now hashtag I stand with Reese was going pretty strong. Uh, or so I thought. Um, you know, I said and look, I'm not trying to get involved in this competition. I want it to be completely impartial. That's that's where I sit. I I want. This is a competition to find out what is the ultimate pump up song. I don't want to have uh, any. I don't want to sway it, except for this one. Okay, except for last week because, oh, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe it was immature. Um, emotions were running high, but I did encourage the voting. I did encourage to sway the voting, and I think, uh, partially, I was punished for that. So I told everyone to vote for Eye of the Tiger because I wasn't feeling. The Wolf Mother's Joker and the Thief after the uh, Reese Maston upset, which uh, came in at 51%, 49%. So it was a real, it was a hard loss. It was, a, and um, there was a lot of Reese Maston fans out there last week, you know, have, having to suck it up, move on, and, um, you know, just hashtag I stand with Reese. And even though you're in the minority, not by much, but you're still in the minority, um, we still have to band together. And I thought um, there was a movement there that was going to be pretty strong to vote for Eye of the Tiger. Now, um, this is what happened. So we vote on three different platforms, YouTube, uh, the Memoirs of a White Guy Facebook group, which you can go join, and uh, the Memoirs of a White Guy Instagram account on the story once a week. Now, there's three different uh, places to vote, and the reason why I do this is to get the bre- the best cross-spread of uh, what the general population thinks, because YouTube, I, I probably get a lot of people who don't even listen to the podcast voting, so, you know, and I think their vote counts, because these are people non-biased, just going, oh, this is a better pump-up song. Uh, the Memoirs of a White Guy Facebook group, I'll be honest, it's getting a little bit circle jerky in there, um, it's getting a lot, um, you know, I feel like you, the opinions usually of the Facebook group are quite different to that of the general population. I'm not sure why. And I'm not having a go. I'm just saying it's definitely suspicious. So all I want to know is, guys in the Facebook group, I'm watching you. Um, I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> uh, so what happened was the YouTube poll came back. Eye of the Tiger heavily in favor. YouTube was 75% Eye of the Tiger to 25% Joker and the Thief, which is absolutely what it should be. Eye of the Tiger is a better pump-up song, um, even though I was telling you guys to vote for the wrong reasons. Deep down, I know that um, Eye of the Tiger, it's in Rocky. It's one of the classics. I think it's pretty silly to vote for Wolf Mother over uh, Survivor. So uh, then then this was the curveball. This one just came in like a bloody bloody shame-worn spinner. You're going, where the fuck did that come from? How did that get through? That's insane. So this came in. Joker and the Thief won the Facebook group 118 votes to 60. So I was thinking, wait, so I have the Tiger has annihilated Joker and the Thief on YouTube, but then... In the Facebook group, Joker and the Thief has annihilated I and I have the Tiger. It's not like they were even close. So that's complete reversal, which is why I have three polls, because it's a best of three every week. So it all came down to the Instagram poll. And um, guys, I'm uh, pretty pretty happy to announce that I have the Tiger definitely came in with the win. 60% to 40% Joker and the Thief. I have the Tiger continues through to the next round in the ultimate pump up song championships well done all right and uh, you know i respect him good on him so uh i'll just write that in now i've got to update the whiteboard um so i have the tiger will be playing the winner of holding up for a hero uh the shrek 2 version or turn down for what now look i don't want to predict the future but i think i have the tiger um after that is oh no sorry sorry i have the tiger is playing off against thunderstruck i'm reading it wrong 
Um, oh, that will be a good matchup. I have the Tiger versus ACDC. God damn, who knows? Um, that will be a good matchup come semi-final time, which will be in a few weeks, actually, because we're just wrapping up the first round games, I think, in the next two weeks. So, um, this week's uh, matchup, let's, um, let's do, um, let's do it. Let's do Holding Out for a Hero uh, on the Shrek 2 soundtrack versus Lil Jon's Turn Down for What. Um, if you don't know, familiarize yourself with the two songs. Um, holding out for a hero, you might remember great scene of Shrek where um, Radio Mike uh, or Human Shrek, as he's known in the film, uh, is going, you know, going into the castle and far, far away. And I think they're trying to like rescue, or they're trying to stop, they're trying to stop the wedding, or I forget what the actual plot line is. They've all escaped from the prison, uh, like Pinocchio and stuff of helped him out, you know, like with the, you know, like, ah, ah, are you wearing women's underwear? I most certainly am not. That's a great line. And then they come, they rock up to the castle with the big ass gingerbread man. And then, um, they pretty much just annihilate the shit out of the castle. And then, um, one of the big gingerbread, one of his gumdrop button buttons, sorry, gets, um, shot off by the catapult and it's pretty heartbreaking stuff. It's, I would say it's definitely not for the faint hearted that scene, but the soundtrack of the scene is, Absolutely. So this is this is the Jennifer uh, Saunders version, which obviously starts with uh, I think she must play the fairy godmother um, in Shrek. So it starts off with um, the fairy godmother. C minor. Put it in C minor. Oh, by the way, I'm singing to avoid copyright. Last week I got copyrighted with the uh, Joker and the Thief, so I feel like if I sing. It'll fuck up the YouTube algorithm because they'll be like, what? This isn't music. <laughs> so, all right. I don't know the... Eight, nine. I don't really know the lyrics. When there's Jeff, my name is Jeff. Name is Jeff. Dream. Just go listen to the song yourself. Okay, hang on. So you're probably thinking, by the way, Luke, this is a shithouse pump-up song. What? I'm not pumped. Wait for it. It's it's like it's like a lot of these um, pump up songs. It's a slow build. I would say, um, what else has a slow build? Sandstorm had a slow build. Thunderstruck has a pretty slow build. Um, Turn down for what would have a slow build. Uh, a, a lot of them, you know, like uh, Eye of the Tiger is is the best example of that. It's a duka 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 duka. Just palm muted guitar for forty seconds. So this is that, you know. But are you ready to get pumped, ladies and gentlemen? Oh. He's gotta be strong, and he's gotta be hurt, and he's gotta be hurt for the fight. Alright, I'm probably, your ears are probably bleeding. <clears throat> I'll stop. But the point is, you get it. It's a tune. Dude, this is like actually like a, it's not it's not a traditional pump up song. I acknowledge that, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm bloody glad it's in this competition because I think it has a place here. And then, by the way, there's an epic keyboard solo at one point. Oh, there's like some there's some like uh, is it I don't know what it is. is it violin? Yeah, it's just like a real orchestra. Oh, dude, this is such a bop. And then that's playing up. Uh, against what is completely a different song, um, Lil John. Where's Lil John at, dude? Um, turn down for what? It's <laughs> by the way, this is so sad. When you go on Lil John's Spotify, it's still his most popular song by about two hundred and fifty million plays. <laughs> so he hasn't really had another hit since. But goddamn, it is a pump up. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if you don't know who Lil John is, by the way, he's the guy who doesn't really do much, but then it gets to the crucial point of the song, and he's like, I'm gonna scream! Dun, 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 dun. He just screams something. Usually it's his name, or in this case, it's turned down for what? But sometimes it's just like, you know, sometimes he'll just scream random shit like, uh, Lilo and Stitch! Dun, 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 dun. Or he'll be like, I'm a turtle wearing a hat! You know? <laughs> he'll just scream anything. He honestly could just scream anything and it would like, it wouldn't affect the song. He could have been like, you know, like. Give me one shot. Turn 
I'm a turkey wearing thongs. <laughs> Dude, imagine if the song was just called Turkey Wearing Thongs. Turkey wearing thongs. <laughs> and you know what? Turkey's kind of just like, you know, that can't really walk properly anyway. And it'd just be like, rawr, 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 and it'd just be wearing thongs. Dude, tell me I'm not the best comedian in Australia after that. Tell me. I will, I will argue that I am. <laughs> You know, there's, there's a lot of guys putting out a lot of good stuff, but ain't no one, you know, telling it like it is like this podcast. And that's why you guys keep coming back. I get it. I, finally, I see the appeal of this podcast. It's where you hear raw turkey edgelord jokes that no other comedian would be willing to make. Turkey wearing thongs. <laughs> what else could he say? Like, so I'm just try- trying to like channel my inner Lil John in the studio. Um, all right, let's go. You ready? Serviette in a box. And it's just a song about a serviette that hasn't been taken out of its box yet. Serviette in a box. Turkey wearing thongs. My name is Lil John. Dude, that is his career. Just screaming shit. I could be the next little John, you know? <laughs> Turkey wearing thongs. Can someone make a remix of that, please? I can't be bothered, but that would be really good to hear the uh, Turkey wearing thongs edition of that song. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, why do you guys listen to this shit? Ah, it's my favorite, man. This, this is why I like doing the podcast. Because no one would watch a video of me saying, Oi, imagine if turned down for what? But I actually said turkey wearing thongs. Everyone would be like, this is bad content. But when it's like in the midst of like, you know, when it's 40 minutes into a podcast, you're like, geez, this is good. Because that's the standard of podcast really, isn't it? It's just like, it doesn't even have to be funny. It just has to be not boring. Like... And, and sometimes it can be boring. Like, I listen to heaps of podcasts. They're boring as shit. And, but that's the, the I've said the stand. I mean, that's the thing. The standard's so low for podcasting that, that I guess turkey wearing thongs is up there in the top 5% of content on the, on the iTunes store. <laughs> and, hey guys, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so go vote for that. So it's holding up for a hero, Shrek 2, um, versus, um, turkey wearing thongs. Now, nah, We'll do it turn down for what? Um, Because obviously that wouldn't be fair because Turkey wearing thongs would absolutely crush it uh, in that competition. So yeah, uh, go vote on YouTube, Facebook and uh, Instagram when you see it up during the week. And I guess, like always, may the ultimate pump song... Oh, I fucked it up. Hang on. As always, may the ultimate pump up win. I would have been terrible auditioning for that role in The Hunger Games where she's like, may the odds be Everly in your, and I would have been like, uh, favorites. Sorry, what? Oh, may the, may the, may the odds be Everly in your favorites. So no, it's favor. It's, look, try it again with favor. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about Cadbury chocolates in a mixed, uh, box. Um, <laughs> anyway, the point is I can't speak. So yeah, man, what else? I think that was all I really had to talk about. I didn't really have a lot to talk about today. I'm surprised I've been talking for 45 minutes with the week I've had. I was like, this will be a 20 minute podcast. I'll just come on tell everyone how much my week sucks and then I'll be like bye but you know what I'm, I'm in a good mood now I this podcast I think turkey wearing thongs has turned my week around and that's life guys that's what I'm saying it's a roller coaster at the start we started a dream world level thing and now and now I'm back to like the first time I went on the Superman ride when I was 10 at movie world I'm on a high you know that's and and I can thank you know, Lil John for that, for screaming in every song and allowing me uh, to, to, to mock his art. And that's put me in a great mood. So um, thank you very much for, for checking out the podcast. Also, I want to say thanks heaps to all the people who have been supporting me on uh, Patreon during the week. Had a, had a fair few pe- new people come on board to the Patreon. And uh, that helps out a lot because if you don't know, that is the only reason currently why I can keep doing what I do with all my content. Um, I make hardly any money out of YouTube. Even my Bachelor video got demonetized. I don't know how. Fuck YouTube. Um, and yeah, so pretty much Patreon is the only thing that's keeping me going at the moment uh, in between the tours, which is uh, really cool and I appreciate it because um, 
If you don't know, Luke and Lewis is costing us a lot of money. That uh, that show is definitely running at a loss because we you know we pay Keelan with ten thousand dollars for the set. It's it's not cheap. Um, and same with this podcast. I pay to fucking hell. Why am I doing all this? I'm paying so much. It's not even free content. It's content that costs me money. Guys, the point is, I appreciate you all supporting me, and uh, it means the world, and it really helps a lot. So, um, yeah, if you want to go check out the Patreon, there's cool rewards on there. Um, I try and get videos up early a fair bit uh, up on the Patreon, as well as uh, the podcast if I uh, record it early. So, yeah, get on there. And there's also a great group chat on there. Like, we have a bachelor chat. So, especially it's if you want a community, if, if, if you have no one to um, talk about the bachelor with while it's going to air, jump in the Patreon Discord because uh, bachelor chat was going off last night. Um, while I was at my gig, and I was so jealous, because they everyone's in the Patreon chat just going like, oh man, that chick's nuts, or like this, and I'm just like, fuck, I want to watch it, <laughs> and I still haven't yet, but um, yeah, it's a lot of good fun, and uh, and the guys who are in there are super cool, and uh, you know who you are, and I, you guys know already know that I really appreciate it, and I get in there all the time, and uh, have a chat, and we just pretty much talk about garbage, you know, this week I'm sure there'll be a lot of um, turkey wearing thongs chat, and that's the kind of content that that you want so um yeah i don't think i have anything else to chat about other than if you want oh, by the way i haven't plugged in, in a while if you want to see me uh see me live next year uh definitely join my mailing list at luke um i'm trying to get uh the mailing list up so when the show's gone pre-sale um you know more people uh see it and stuff because uh last year a few shows especially in melbourne um almost sold out off the pre-sale so it's good if you want to get on there to get tickets early especially for like a friday saturday night and um, next year, I think I've just, uh, like I've decided next year, I just want to book in almost exactly the same to, uh, w- with adding a few shows as well in other places, but almost exactly the same size rooms as I did this year. Um, and just, just to try and keep building that thing and selling them out. And, you know, so yeah, I'm going to be doing probably venues that are too small next year, which I'm kind of doing on purpose because I just want to like, uh, I just, I just want to like make sure I fill them all next year and, um, yeah, so there. Yeah. So if you want to get on the mailing list, the point is next year might be hard getting tickets in some places in the major cities and stuff. So yeah, would love it if you went and got on there. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much for coming out to the sh- uh oh, you didn't come out to the show. What the fuck am I saying, guys? I should have ended the podcast two minutes ago. Thank you very much for listening. Um keep watching the Bachelor video, share them with your friends, and let's try and get my YouTube channel out of the hole that it's in, thanks to the YouTube algorithm. So yeah. Guys, hope you guys have had a better week than I have. I've had a good one now. I'm back in a good mood. And um, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Peace! That's probably how Lil Jon ends all his songs. Peace! <laughs> that just screams it into the microphone. Um, Alright, bye. <laughs> so